Exciting. Yes. Excellent. Uh, okay, so this is um, this is a quick talk that I gave uh, in on uh, Lab Week. So Protocol went off and did like a whole week together where we uh, we had some fun, uh, but mostly we talked about the future of IPFS and and all of that good stuff. Um, and this was just a quick talk that I put together from notes. So it's going to be fun anyway. Uh, if you like, uh, so okay, who 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 d d has done JS at some point in their lives? <laughs> all right. <laughs> has anyone here worked with the JS IPFS API? A few of you. Okay, this talk is kind of for you. Uh, who's worked with JS IPFS? Some people. Okay, the rest of you. <laughs> this talk is even more for you because you're going to learn something. <laughs> uh, so this is about um, designing a more ergonomic uh, IPFS API uh, using new uh, JS thingies. Um, so what, are, what am I asking? I'm asking, um, like, how can the uh, IPFS API be a bit more appealing to programmers? Um, I believe that we can make it easier to program for IPFS. I believe that programming for IPFS can be more enjoyable, and I believe that programming for IPFS can be more exciting. Um, and uh, I believe that solving these, these, these problems can encourage developers to use IPFS even more. Um, so what I'm thinking about is like, if I were going to be uh, coding and getting stuff out of IPFS or putting stuff into it, what is the kind of API that I'd like to use? Um, like, it, what, what would I code? What, what, would, what would be the best thing, the, the kind of like dream code that I would like to use? Um, and so the, the thing is, I don't want to just change things on a whim. Like, there's, there's been a whole bunch of work put into like interfaces and uh, code that is implementing these interfaces and... IPFS is is like all callbacks. It's all it's all pull streams under the hood, uh, and and I realise the kind of uh, the kind of thing that I'm proposing here and the magnitude of the of the of the problem. But well, when I started out on this, I thought, well, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna even propose anything that's slightly different to what's there, I should have some bloody good reasons for doing it. Uh, and then I came up with a few reasons, and I came up with even more reasons, uh, and then um, I just kind of kept going. And so, yeah, there's an increasingly large set of reasons to maybe change some things. Um, and so, uh, this is about improving developer experience. Um, I so <laughs> what I did, I created a repo, of course. Um, I created a repo called IPFS X. Uh, it's an experimental playground for playing around with like the programmatic API for de talking to IPFS. Um, and what it is is it's just a mapping layer between the API, the uh, the IPFS API, JS IPFS API exposes or JS exposes, and the API that I want that I would like to see. Um, and one of the biggest, so it's it's basically all like async away, but the biggest difference is making use of async iterators. Um, I'm probably not going to go over this because we're kind of short of time, but what is async iterators? Well, blah, 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 blah. OK. <laughs> Basically, a native language feature that allows us to, to, to stream data, uh, which is super, super rad. Um, and right now, uh, like most of the web browsers, most of the JavaScript uh, like runtimes all implement async await. They all um, implement um, async iterators. Um, so now is quite a good time to do it if we were, because there's no need to transpile, and we don't transpile anything at the moment, uh, which is super rad because uh, it's just complicated when dealing with errors and things like that. So um, so yeah, no transpile, cool, uh, and it means that we don't need to use Node.js streams or pull streams anymore, and and for that matter, if we if you were already using pull streams in your in your application or whatever, it's kind of it's kind of like trivial to convert between them. I wrote some modules; they like 20 lines of code each really easy because there's so many similarities between um, 408 loops and async iterables and stuff like that. Um, they're very much like pull streams. It, it, there's, there's many parallels. Um, I, yeah, the, there's obvious, obvious differences. But anyway, and the cool thing is if you're using Node.js streams, there's no real kind of like upgrade path because Node.js streams are now async iterables as well. So you can just pass that in as, a, as, a, as an argument to many of these functions. And what's kind of cool is that if you've ever used the JS IPFS API, we've got like we've got big API surface area. We've got like three different ways of adding content. Uh, they basically do the same thing, but they're like the add, which also takes streams, uh, add pull stream for add, like get, getting a pull stream and putting stuff through it, and add readable stream for like a Node.js stream. 
Um, so we don't have this, this kind of big API surface area anymore. Um, and that means, uh, and it means that we don't need to import modules to, like, like the pull stream module. It's ecosystem modules, like, uh, th for other things you might want to do with pull streams. Uh, you don't need to, for the browser, import stuff like readable stream. You don't need, like, pump to deal with errors in a, in a, in a, in a stream pipeline. Um, so that all contributes to a smaller bundle. Uh, fewer dependencies, quicker to install, super win, win, win. Um, and because we've got uh, a smaller API surface area, there are fewer tests to run. We, we don't have to test all these different combinations of adding because there's only going to be one add command, which, is, uh, which will take a bunch of different arguments. But, but yeah, fewer tests to run. It means that fewer tests to run means that the tests are going to take less time to, to execute. Um, and, and yeah, it, it's good. It's good, good, good. And then we have this, the idea of this kind of interface IPFS core, which is like an interface that you have to fulfill if you're going to be a, an IPFS implementation. Um, and if you're going to do that, um, like I had to do that because I built the thing for Companion, which is like web.window.ipfs, which is, which which is something that Companion does is it puts IPFS in every web page. So your web page can just use window.ipfs. But what it is, is it's a proxy over a post message to a J, uh, like a, um, uh, an IPFS instance running in Companion. And my window.ipfs had to conform to this interface. Um, and so just by having a smaller API surface area, there's fewer things for me to implement. So it's a lot easier for me to do that if I wanted to. And then um, uh, JS IPFS is basically all pool streams under the hood. Uh, and then, but then when we do expose like a Node.js stream a API, it's, uh, it's, there's boilerplate converting between pull streams and readable streams, and we need to import those modules. And now we don't need them, so we can get rid of them, smaller bundle, um, less code, you know, those sort of things. And one of the big, big cool things about um, async iterables and for a weight of loops is uh, it's easier to error handle stuff. We don't have to have like, uh, so Pullstream has a really good uh, way of dealing with this is that in your, in your sync, you have like a callback with a, if you're collecting stuff, then you'll have a callback with an error and errors are propagated up and down really well and easy to catch. Um, but in Node.js streams, if you have like pipe, you need another module to, to um, listen for all the errors and you don't know and, and propagating those through to the end is, is difficult. But like with async iterables and for a weight of, you just add a try catch. And when, when things go wrong, you just catch it. And it's just, it's, it's way easier, uh, which is really nice. The other really amazing thing for developers is much better stack traces. So uh, the, the problem with um, like callbacks and, uh, and like streams and, and all of that is that when you get stack traces, you get stack traces that sometimes don't have any of your code in them. And that's really frustrating because they're, they're clipped at like async boundaries. Um, and with, uh, with async await, you don't get that problem. So it's easier to debug and uh, it's a better developer experience. Okay, that was super whistle stop door. Cool. Um, what does it look like? What does it look like? Okay, so if I'm going to create an IPFS node now, um, we just have to pass a IPFS, a regular IPFS or a IPFS API to IPFS X. With IPFS, you usually have to wait. It's an event emitting. You have to wait for a ready event before you can use it. One of the things that IPFS X does, which makes things a little bit easier, is we can just wait for that thing to be ready, and now we can use it. We don't have to, like, if, if you are, basically, if you're using IPFS, you'll probably write a little kind of helper function which allows you to wait for it. And this just means that it's done once in IPFS, it's tested, it's done right, and there's less, that people just don't implement this over and over again. So, so that's kind of fun. Adding content is super easy. Uh, you just call node.add. You can give it a string. Uh, previously, you'd have to give it a buffer, which meant you had to find some sort of buffer implementation somewhere. Uh, give it a string, and it will add that. And then we can use this magical for await uh, because what it does is node.add just returns straight away an async iterator. Uh, and then we can iterate over the, the, the um, the whatever comes out of, of the other end once it's adding this content. And in this case, it's going to add one thing, and you're going to get a, uh, a, a CID for whatever it creates. Um, so that's kind of frustrating. So there's this, uh, there's this shorthand where each iterator that we return has like a first and a last method. Uh, and so if you're adding one thing, and you know there's only going to be one thing returned, then you can just await on the first item that's going to be, or the last item that's going to come out of that iterator. So so that's kind of fun. Um, 
And then, so I said earlier that Node.js streams are async iterators too. We can just add a Node.js stream to add, uh, to add content because add takes an iterator. So it takes strings, it takes buffers, or it takes iterators or async iterators. Um, and so create readable stream, create read stream, it returns a async iterator. So you can just add that. Uh, and if you want to add multiple things, then you also, you give it an array is an, uh, is an iterator. There's lots of things in JavaScript that are already iterators. Um, arrays, objects, maps, sets. Uh, array is one of them. So we just iterate over this. And then our content is, an, uh, it can be a string, a buffer, or an iterator, uh, or async iterator. So then, then this becomes more useful here because now we're looping over and we can collect up our whatever comes out of our uh, of our iter async iterator here. So, so that's kind of fun. Uh, and so you can use uh, generators to create your own iterator if you want. So this will this will so generators when you call them will return something an iterable, uh, and you can you can add add that. This is just for 10 times um, yielding some random bytes. So that's kind of fun. Uh, and then like for an async iterator, it's, it's very similar. You can see the difference here is just async and a promise. Um, so we're saying it's an async generator, uh, an async iterator to be returned. And instead of yielding uh, some, a, a value, we yield a promise which resolves to a value. So anyway, that's kind of just for fun. You'd normally just kind of get hold of that something to add and then just add it. Um, and once you've added stuff, you're probably going to want to cat it out. So uh, you just get the CID. And then we've got something similar. We just, we just cat out uh, the CID. And we're, we're in a 408 of loop again. And we get chunks of our file. And we can cat them together. Easy. <laughs>